Hello, thank you so much for having me here. I, as was just mentioned, am a futurist and immersive technologist. I work primarily in augmented and virtual reality. Democratize knowledge and information. I grew up in a small town in West Texas, four hours from the nearest airport or mall, so small it is literally classified as frontier and does not have a stoplight. Today, I consult with Fortune 500 companies around the globe to help them bring the future of immersive computing into their business units. I am a VR AR faculty member at a think tank in Silicon Valley, Singularity University. I've been an executive in San Francisco bringing the new design paradigms of VR and AR to market. And I have helped to lead design thinking transformation globally for IBM. I know how hard that journey was. And I think our world will be a much better place if we can democratize access for more people. So I do my part to democratize information and knowledge. But enough about me. I want to know about you guys. Real quick, raise your hand if you work in healthcare, anything that touches healthcare. Raise your hand if you work in manufacturing. Raise your hand if you do anything with the military. Raise your hand if you work in entertainment or sports in any way. Raise your hand if you are doing software support for some company in any of these domains. OK. So all of these fields are going to be disrupted by this technology. Has anyone tried virtual, and virtual reality? Who's tried it? Raise your hand. OK, so I'd say about half of us. Who's tried augmented reality? Maybe the HoloLens? A few less, maybe a third to a quarter. Those of you who've tried it, I want you to vote. If you loved it, raise the roof. If you hated it, your hands stay down. If you weren't quite sure, it's right here. Ready? On three. One, two, three, vote. All right, so we have some believers. We have some people who are not so sure. You have good reason to be not so sure. Why? It's expensive. The technology is still getting small enough to be portable and useful. You look kind of like an idiot when you wear those things on your face. There are a lot of reasons why we have not yet seen mass consumer adoption, but we're going to discuss what that future is going to look like. I want us to talk about why this technology is regularly cited as a top 10 trend in every analyst report, Gartner, Forrester, IDC, Deloitte. I want us to talk about why every leading technology company is vying for technological leadership in this domain. Google, Facebook, Intel, Microsoft, Adobe. What is this about? What makes this technology so potentially disruptive, so potentially valuable? And why should you care to deploy this tech? What kind of problems can it help you solve? Because this technology is going to be the immersive technology platform of our future. It's going to be the connective tissue of AI, robotics, all of these other technologies that you are charged to, to bring to your enterprises. So the first big value add is the ability to harness attention with augmented and virtual reality. We live in a world where we are swimming in a hyper-connected sea of data. And we know that power is very connected to your ability to access, deploy, model, and digest this information. So how do we navigate this hyper-connected ocean of data in the best possible way? Then we move to the storefront of our grandparents' time. More compact, still physicalized. Now we move to the GUI of today where every physical object can be abstracted, demonetized, democratized, digitized, and put in our phone. Alarm clock, it's in our phone. Calendar, it's in our phone. You guys remember when these were concrete objects, I know. So what happens when we do this? As information density increases, multitasking increases, new interaction paradigms have to be learned, which of course increases cognitive load. What does this mean for your daily experience? Information overload, right? Yeah, I see nodding heads. OK, so how do you manage that? What is scarce in a world where information is rich? American Nobel Prize winning economist, sociologist, and computer scientist Herbert Simon predicted this. A wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. What you all are so generously giving me right now is your most important resource. It is also your business's most important resource because it's your talent. It's your talent's ability to have impact. If you do nothing else, if you take nothing else away from this talk, please recognize your attention is your scarcest and most valuable resource. Use it wisely. 
And education has known this for a while as well. This is the cone of learning that Edgar Dale created in the early 1900s. Maria Montessori did something very similar, if you're familiar with embodied education through Montessori. Notice this. After two weeks, we tend to remember 10% of what we read and 20% of what we hear, whereas we remember 90% of what we say and do. How strange that our education system is based on the former. What if it were to look something more like this? I've worked with the National Head Start Association to bring augmented reality into early childhood education classrooms for this purpose, because it exponentially increases the rate at which young children learn. But it's not just young children. Numerous studies have been done that show if you are interacting, you retain 40 to 60% more information, you learn more quickly, and it doesn't work if you're just looking at the, uh, the reality, if you're looking at a video, for example. Let's say you put on a VR headset. Columbia University did a study. If you're observing the manipulation of a structure in virtual reality, not a big difference. But if you actually are using inactive cognition, interacting with that information and knowledge, massive increase in the amount that we retain and the speed at which we learn. We try to do this now by bringing design thinking into our companies. Right? You're laughing because you know about this. What if with VR you could place people inside a new experience and show them macular degeneration, for example? Or equip entire workforces to be more productive. Cybersecurity is something that is actually quite difficult to train. We just heard a bit about this. You need to be proficient in Python scripts, navigating log files, understanding forensic analysis. What if it were gamified and it became a spatial experiment? This is an actual real offering that is produced by a company in Colorado called ProtectWise, where a cybersecurity specialist can navigate their entire infrastructure as a game. So why does this matter? Harness attention, revolutionize learning, and touch new worlds. When is this going to happen? It's a $107 billion industry, according to Goldman Sachs, by the year 2025. I think it's going to be bigger than that. Why now? The ubiquity and quality of mobile devices essentially powering these experiences. VR is the majority of the ecosystem now, with smartphones as the brain. But this technology is evolving. The, the cost is going down, and the technology quality is going up, resolving issues like nausea and form factor. Cell phones used to be like briefcases. VR and AR are in a similar phrase right now. This is why, by the way, Unity can raise $400 million in its 2017 private equity round. In fact, they received three times the amount of term sheets that they wanted, because this is the operating system of the future. They are the OS of the future, game engines. And if you aren't starting to think about this, your industry is not going to be able to keep up with these new ways of operating. Here is Intel's form factor. Very nice. Looks exactly like a pair of glasses. You don't feel like an idiot when you wear it. So here's an example of augmented reality versus virtual reality. Notice that while virtual reality is 90% of the market now, augmented reality will increasingly capture the market and disrupt multiple market ecosystems. Pokemon Go, for example, disrupting all kinds of places. This is Torchy's Tacos that had a 16x increase in its sales because of Pokemon Go users. Or, for example, Second Life, which creates an entire economy for people in a digital world right now. People have made the cover of Business Week because they've become millionaires through selling actual virtual world. The Second Life economy in 2016 was half a billion dollars. Anyone know about this? Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One? This stuff is happening. It's becoming mainstream. And technology adoption is increasing in its rate of acceleration. Look at this curve on the far right. Adoption is changing, and you all are heralding that process. You are the keepers of that transition. So how do, we, how do we deal with this? This is what technological advancement looks like these days. So in order to lead, you need vision and courage, you need patience and unlearning, and you need to empower and connect. And this is an entire talk that we could give about network systems. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. So, this is the next computing paradigm. VR reigns now, AR is next. We'll have exponential use cases for AR as the technology proliferates, and VR too. So I'm going to run through some really quick use cases because we're super short on time. The total addressable market is actually about the problems you can solve. It's a tool. 
what can you use to not make this mistake? Please don't make this mistake. The gimmick is an issue, guys. Let's get past the gimmick. I want you to remember Delta. You want to create change. I want you to do it through design. This is a phone app you can download right now that allows you to create spatialized representations. Here are architects working with meta technology and 3D space to collaborate. This is a cave automation system that I was in a few weeks ago at Rolls-Royce, where they've actually been able to reduce their design times by from a week to two hours by getting everyone into this cave system. Here is designing a space in a virtual world. You can even design things like molecules, pharmaceutical design, and partner with AI to run all the possible ligand connections. Expertise and education, Delta. Bringing in knowledge on how to put together an IKEA desk or a very complex piece of machinery, scaling that out to your team. Especially if they are remote and in the field and you have a hands-free application where you can actually bring an expert in to help you in real time. Logistics, this is huge. DHL is already applying augmented reality to logistics. GE saw a 64% decrease in time when they implemented Google Glass. This is also useful for disaster relief, for example, where you actually need to come in with an augmented reality headset to understand the infrastructure of the space. The try before you buy experience, all over the place right now. You can also download this on your phone. IKEA or is allowing you, partnering with Apple, to try things out in your home. This is the early consumer adopter marketplace. Recruitment, this is another interesting form of try before you buy. The British Army saw a 66% increase in signups when they gave people immersive experiences. Siemens and Autodesk offered a personalized experience. We're going to skip it for now. And then analytic tools, this is huge. What would it be like to be able to represent data, complex data, visually, and have cross-team collaboration, remote and present? Because this technology totally destroys geographic distance. Here's another interesting uh, 3D representation from Virtualytics. You can actually have more dimensions in space and time. And you really need to try this out to understand how different it is. And tomorrow in the Demo Dome, you guys can try some of those things. But why VR specifically? I always like to touch on VR because people are like, ah, AR is awesome, but VR, eh, it's glorified filming and gaming. There are real use cases here. How do you make it more than a roll of the dice to implement this technology? Remember Delta and dice, guys. So the dangerous. Great use case for VR. Tomorrow in the Demo Dome, you can try walking on a ledge in VR. I want you to try it and see what it's going to be like, OK? But this is really, really practically useful. Think about training for interactive health and safety for an oil and gas company, which is what this is, mocked up an Unreal game engine. The impossible. This is superpowers to the people, every little kid's favorite thing, and all of you, because we were all little kids at one point. Imagine being able to show your child the movement of nutrients in a tree. Imagine being able to go with them inside a Dali painting. The counterproductive. This is fascinating. You can change people's race and gender through body transfer in VR. You can also have them do things like cut down trees, mock up a beautiful forest. Stanford Virtual Reality Lab did this. Have a machine, or a, um, what is it? Thank you, chainsaw. I love my audience for this reason. Have a chainsaw. What do people do when they see a chainsaw in a forest? They cut down the trees. People use less paper after they do this. You don't tell them to. They just do. It would never make sense to make someone cut down a forest to use less paper. But in VR, you can do the counterproductive. And the expensive, valuable in so many domains. So um, taking children on a field trip, for example, to see with their bodies how big a building is. This is the Google Cardboard, which is $15, major increase in access for a ton of people. Or being able to bring people into a game without the expensive ticket. 360 VR is making this possible. This could be getting frontline tickets at a fashion show or going underwater and scuba diving. But you cannot think about this technology without talking about safety and ethics. 
Research on the impact of VR and AR on brain development in kids is huge, really important. We haven't done a bunch on this yet. And then standards around digital rights, because there has never been a technology more capable of sucking up all of your data. It'll know where your head is, positional tracking, eye tracking, especially when you're projecting light into the retina for augmented reality. It'll know your interaction paradigms. Think of user experience research for immersive worlds. It will know so much about you. We have to start thinking now so that we can build good products that serve our societies and make our societies better. So recap, the early VR AR use cases are Design, expertise, try before you buy, and data capture. Remember DICE, and don't forget safety and ethics. OK, to finish, I can't put you all in a VR headset. I wish I could. Go to the demo dome tomorrow. You can try Ventana for holograms. You can try the ledge. But in the absence of that, I'm going to try to simulate the difference between immersive learning and the way that we currently share information and knowledge, the, the, the difference between now and the future of work. So this is one of my all-time favorite quotes. Anyone know who it's by? Oh, come on, one of the best futurists of all time, Buckminster Fuller. If you want to teach people a new way of thinking, don't bother trying to explain it to them. Give them a tool, the use of which will lead to new ways of thinking. That's what I think this technology is. But it makes perfect sense, right? Yeah, you all got that. What do I mean? This is you. And the difference between what I just read and what you're viewing is the difference that new representations of knowledge can have on the way we share information, the way we model and deploy information, the way your children will learn, the way your workplaces can scale access to information and knowledge, even remotely. And so the question for you all is, how are you going to have that vision and courage to actually try to implement these things, to create the future? So what I would urge you all to do is to embrace that gray area between pragmatism and imagination. Because being an optimist without skepticism makes you naive. But being a skeptic without optimism makes you a cynic. So how do we balance those things and help us all evolve in the way that we are able to perceive and understand not only our work, but also the world and each other. Thank you.